I know one fella, he, a very good man, and uh, he came to work. He came to the job site. If you had a coffee break, you'd get fired. You'd get fired. You couldn't even drink a cup of coffee at 10 o'clock? No. So you'd have nothing to drink until lunchtime? Nothing between. No, just water, that's all. From the water pail. That wasn't very sanitary either. Everybody drank from the same dipper. There were no paper cups those days. Uh, but I know one fellow there, he came to the job site at 8.30 in the morning. And uh, so he was sitting in his car. And the contractor came about the same time and he saw him. And he, uh, he, he said, uh, how come you're not working? So he said, it isn't 8 o'clock yet. And you know, that day he got fired because he didn't want to go to work before 8. For free. For free, yeah. That's, that's a tough thing for you know. Because there were lots of other people that wanted they to could, work. They could care less. There were other people ready to take there, the job. There was right? 50 people to take your place. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so I, I worked there probably about six months until the late fall or winter. Then there was a big high school they built in East Orange. It had just started. The Clifford Scotts High School in East Orange. It's still around? Yeah. It's the big, yeah. It's a, a very large school. And that was, um, they were digging for that. And my father had a lot of connections. I'll say that about him. And he got me in there. And that was good because we didn't live too far away from there. And I didn't have a car. I could walk to a place. It probably took about 15 minutes to walk, but I did. And I stayed there for... I was a carbon apprentice. I was there for maybe eight months. And that, uh, that, that was a good job. I, I, don't, I don't remember now how much I got paid, but it, it was a little more than I got at the other place. But I didn't have to work as hard, though. I worked together with a big, fat Irish fella. Now, you're, uh, you got, got there in 1936, and you said that your mother showed up in 38 and then went back in 39. So you were there while well, your mother was in uh, Feta no. for a year or two before, uh, yeah. before she showed up again. Yeah. So it was just you and your dad, and then uh, when did Ingvald show oh, up? He came there about a year after me. Uh, by that time when he came, we had moved to a different place in Carroll Street in East Orange, which was only about a half a mile away from where we lived. And that was... Um, I believe we had the whole second floor there, you know. We had a second floor apartment. You and your father? Yeah. And he did, well, he, he, he did all the cooking, you know. Yeah, then what did you do, wash the dishes? Uh, I think so, but I, those days we didn't use too many dishes. But, um. Uh, and you worked uh, five days a week? Five, Six? Five days a week. Uh, I think that. I think when I worked in uh, in East Orange, then, then we worked in uh, then we worked on Saturday too. So I come home with about if it didn't rain, listen to this. If it didn't rain, and we got a full week, like we call it, then I come home. If it was Saturday too, I come home with eighteen dollars. So. Uh, no taxes. There were no taxes that day, but I believe there. Social Security, I think it start, that started in... The Roosevelt years. I think. Yeah, that started in 38. Well, Roosevelt was there. He was the president when I came. He was there from 32 on. Uh, I believe Social Security started in 38. Either 37 or 38. And that's when I first started paying taxes, Social Security taxes. But uh, that, that school in East Orange was very good. And I, I worked together with, with this big Irish father. And um, he had a lot of experience in, in the carpentry and so on. Well, I can remember that there's a fancy dome on the school, you know, like an onion dome on the school. Like a rotunda? Yeah. And he, w he was laying out the rafters for, for that, you know. And he did all the laying out. And... Uh, 
I did the cutting with the electric saw. You know, of course, I cut them for his lines. But there was something there that he did wrong. And he blamed it on me that I had cut it wrong. And you got fired? No, I didn't get fired, but I, he, he told the boss that I had made a mistake. And there was, of course, the boss didn't believe him. He believed me. But I, I couldn't talk, defend myself for kind of the land risk problem. But I more or less got the blame for that from him. That, there was, that I had mistake, made a mistake in the cutting. Did you say it was your fault or his? No, I didn't say that. I didn't say I, I defend myself to him. You know. But uh, Hondeville could, if there were, all those rafters have to be the same, you know, the same sweep in the same angles. Uh, if one was wrong, the all was wrong, you know. And he was right there the whole time, you know. But I, I, I think I got the blame for it. But uh, I didn't know. I didn't get fired for it. I, I stayed on. And in those days, you had to carry a lot of. They used you to for a lot of heavy work, like carrying lumber. If a truck come in with lumber, they would take me off from what I was doing. I had to go and help and bring that lumber into the building. And that that was pretty heavy work, and the time went, went very slow doing something like that. But those days we had the. More, we had the, the winters were much severe. We had a, a lot of snow and a lot of cold weather. I, I think the weather, the, the winters are much better now. In those days. So, so let's see. You landed in '36, and your mother came back in uh, 1938. Yeah. Now you and Mom met about 1938 in church. Well, we what met. Place? What months? Tell me how that happened. I thought I took my camera here. No. You know? We met in uh, in the uh, in the Baptist Church in East Orange on Hawthorne Avenue. See, uh, we went to church. My father and I went to church down there. And uh, no Bethany. Well, and the Bethany came I late. The done. Bethany was the name. What? What? Bethany. I can't find the camera. Bethany was the name. But we uh, we met at this Baptist church uh, in the in the Sunday afternoons. Now Ingvall Hansen uh, introduced. Well, yeah, he he, uh, he he was a big shot those days, and he I guess he introduced me, but I, I don't remember that. Part. He must have known Gabriel Opsel. Oh yeah, he he knew him. Of course he did. And, and the first time I saw Mom, I think was the, in, she was in the kitchen there fixing up some. Uh, the freshmen they were going to have, but they had the, in between the meetings, every, like a little supper uh, in between the meetings. I think that was the first time then. Yeah. Yeah. About 1938? Uh, that could have been 37, I think. She would know. Yeah, 37. 37. What month? Well, I don't know. That, uh, she would know. It could, no. it could be in the... Uh, you told me how long you went together, though. Oh, well, you didn't, uh, you didn't go together right away. No, 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 no. I, had, I, I was afraid. First I, date we had was May twenty fourth. Remember the buck. I, I May twenty fourth, nineteen thirty eight. Seven. Thirty seven. Mm. the buck festival. We went to um, went to a, a place in Newark. What was the name of Symphony Hall? Or? Yeah, leave a little, little uh, mystery to it. The Symphony Hall in East Orange. <laughs> in East Orange, yeah. I'm not asking for the details. Of course, I didn't spare have a, me, spare me. I didn't have a car, so I, I those days. But there wasn't long after before I bought one. Well, how do you get down to the symphony place uh, by bus? Well, we took the bus. The bus took the bus, and then uh, they took it to the end of the line, which was uh, by Eagle Rock Avenue, and then uh, just walk up the hill, uh, two or three blocks to Wilson Terrace. You know. So let's see. Uh, so you, yeah, you were. You, you took the bus back to Wilson Terrace. Yeah. And then you met uh, the Opsels, right? You didn't know any of them there in the beginning? Yeah, I knew them. I met them all in the church. There was four daughters and their parents there. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then Gabriel uh, Opsel, he was pretty strict. He, he, oh, yeah. I think well, he, he was He tough. ruled with an iron hand. Yeah. Yeah. He ruled with an iron hand. And then his uh, wife, uh, Grandma, was softer? Oh, yeah. She was a lot softer. She, she was... Uh, Rather timid, you know. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I said they were, they were very, they were very nice. But he was, uh, he was tough. Huh? Well, he wasn't tough. I, I, I didn't, I can't, as far as me, I, I can't say that he was tough. I didn't have any run-ins with him, if that's what you mean. But he, uh, he knew what he wanted, you know. At that time, he bought, a, I think he was negotiating or buying a place in Sussex, a farm in Sussex. Yeah, when did, would he have bought that? 1940? Uh, no, he bought it in um, 38. Oh, 38? Yeah, 38. But he didn't live up there until maybe uh, 52? No, he lived up there, uh, yeah, I guess so, about 52. But uh, in 